on my truck is uh, it froze up and we're struggling to get it fired up. Been firing, trying to get it fired up for two hours. All right, guys, it's about 30 degrees. Um, last, uh, we're, I think we're about the third week in uh, end of November, and it has been really, really cold. Some of the things that we have, I have been struggling with is uh, I read online uh, diesel trucks they they gel up under 20 degrees and. <laughs> I didn't plug my truck in one night and uh, next day it took us four and a half hours to get it started. I'll show this little clip and some pictures of that. That was, I learned a valuable lesson here. But the other problem we have is water. So at 30 degrees, I don't know if I'm going to get water. I'm about half down. Oh. If you guys remember last year, this was all this was froze up all the time because so much heat was getting out and it was always always iced over. So let's find out if we can get water if we're froze up. Oh check that out, that's amazing. It takes me about 20 minutes to fill this up, so I will be back with you guys. So far, it's staying pretty warm. Inside, I ran out of propane in the one bottle. It lasted about two weeks. This is hard to do with one hand. Another thing that I went and done, I was getting so much cold air that I used to have to hang a blanket. Up, so I turn around and put this insulation all the way up inside my doors and silt the cold air off. You know, as long as I've been doing YouTube, you guys would think that I would get, I would be pretty good at uh, editing, but I'm not. So. Over the uh, weekend, I shampooed my carpets. They look so much better. <clears throat> I have a bad habit when going to the uh, grocery store. Sometimes I just grab stuff and not, not look. And when I get home, it's not what I wanted. And uh, I love oysters. Uh, so they had these oysters in the cans. And it... it ended up being the super spicy hot oysters and I still ate them but they were they were pretty spicy yeah those carpets look good oh. but but yeah it's uh hey Google what's the weather it's 28 degrees and partly cloudy there today it'll be partly cloudy with a forecasted high of 38 and a low of 19. Hey Google, what's the weather for the week, rest of the week? Today through Saturday, it'll be cloudy most of the time, but on Wednesday it'll be mostly sunny. Highs will be around 36 today and tomorrow, rise to 58 on Friday, then be around 52 on Saturday. Lows will be around 18 today and tomorrow, rise to 35 on Friday, then stay around 34 until Saturday. Uh -oh. Not too bad of a week. It is supposed to storm uh, from my app on the phone on Friday and Saturday, so we'll see. 
my house is staying, if I leave it set at 70, it's staying around 72 now that I got everything pretty much dialed in and, and in. And I, I really don't use the fireplace all that much. You know, every once in a while I'll turn it on just because I want the, uh, the fireplace setting in the background. Uh, propane, it ran out like I, I think I said that um, this morning around... Six and I think the propane bottles lost the big ones lasted about two weeks. It cost me about having the freeway propane sponsor. It only costed me about sixty bucks to to fill those. And that uh, last Saturday I had a really important doctor's appointment with disability, and I'm hoping that's the last one. It's taken me four years almost to turn around to get this far. So I'm getting pretty excited uh, with it. Uh, th like I've mentioned before, this is the first winter since all my surgeries and th with the bone infection and the cold weather is it's killing me. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I love everything here and that, and I'm hoping. Hoping to be, I don't really have a choice but to tough it out until the doctors can cut me loose and that. But I'm not going to lie, uh, the cold weather is, has got me pretty, pretty miserable. Uh, this I always do a Thanksgiving every year and uh, last October or this, this last month I, we did a, a special little Thanksgiving party for, for Morgan. Um, uh, pretty good kid. She just turned 21 and she's doing, she had to go to New Mexico. And so she's down there enjoying the sun and that and taking some welding classes. So Morgan, if you're watching this, we all miss you here. Oh, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you come back. Um, uh, this year having everything skirted in so far, uh, the last time I drained my tanks, uh, everything, it, nothing was frozen, so that was awesome. So, not to have to fight getting that out. Oh, but it's, it's cold. Uh, I am miserable. Inside of my home, I'm comfortable. Uh, one thing I kind of wanted to talk about with you guys, if you guys are getting into wanting to do... Uh, the RV lifestyle, the things that you need to, to do is write down a list on everything you wanted. It took me two years to find the exact home I want. And the 34, this is a 2010 34 RL Montana. Uh, they call these the king of fifth wheels. And you can pretty much see why. And sorry, my bed, I have been lazy. I haven't made my bed today. But... These things, if, you know, right now I'm, I've kind of been homeless doing this for three years. Uh, and, and if you're going to live this lifestyle, if you saw, if you go back to my first of my videos, you saw what I was living in. And that was so hard, that bumper pull trailer, it was falling apart and things and. And being able to get into something like this, uh, it's been comfortable. You know, and then last year we, you know, I've talked about it. We spent like $3,000 in propane trying to stay warm. And I used to have to turn the thermostat up to 77 degrees to maintain a temperature of 74 degrees. And this year I can already tell, you know, with being skirted in and stuff, uh, all my windows, like I said, are done. Slide outs are all, all insulated in. Um, and having the AC unit wrapped up with saran wrap, I used to be able to sit here on my couch and I could feel the cold, cold breeze come in from the AC unit. And then if I sat in my desk over there, and to do any work over there, there it was always a cold breeze. And now I can sit here without a fireplace on and not burn. If you guys know anything about wattage, it's fifteen. It's like 1,500 watts is like so much electricity to just keep the thing on. But if I had my disability money, 
to where I could afford afford things a lot, you know, have an income to where I could afford a more of a healthier lifestyle, I could turn the fireplace on. And I already know that if I left the fir the fireplace on, the furnace r rarely goes off, you know. But the problem with that is, is this this trailer has a polar package, so everything is contained in one area, which is a heated heated bay. And if that furnace isn't going off, then your pipes are going to freeze. And then underneath that, it's got the heated underbelly as well. And if your furnace isn't kicking off, your tanks are going to freeze up. So it's like you kind of got to pick pick a battle and choose. So if I was to have the, the fireplace on all the time to save on propane, it would be warm inside the home, but then things underneath would freeze. And every once in a while, I'll, I'll come by and <laughs> so... And I'll, I'll turn my heat on. We had to, like I said, we had to reset the hot water heater. And to do that, you just come over here and you, you flip the, the hot water heater switch on. So, and you, you flip this off and turn it on. You come over here and uh, turn your hot water on and let it run. Now reason why I was laughing is the last time that the uh, the propane ran out I forgot to set the hot water heater and so when I went to go climb in the shower I had cold water and so it took like 45 minutes after I reset everything it took 45 minutes to get that hot water going luckily I mean and, and this was cold it was it was pretty cold it was like 17 degrees and i got lucky that i didn't damage the hot water heater and and freeze it up oh and break things uh this year with the thanksgiving i am going to be teaching you guys how i do my thanksgiving turkey dinner and for a guy like me that's one of my favorite meals to cook is is thanksgiving dinner and i do it all from scratch mostly all from scratch i try to anyway like the mashed potatoes and gravy i have a hard time with the gravy but but uh i'm gonna do thanksgiving dinner bring you guys along for that and i'll teach you guys that oh uh, for the most part inside i'm staying comfortable when i have to go outside and stuff it's just miserable so I'm hoping that we can get the disability wrapped up because I really need it. Um, with everything, with the infection, the bone infection I have going on in my bones and stuff like that, uh, doctors are telling disability and lawyers that I would be a liability to be put back in, to work in the into the workforce. And uh, you know, and it's. It's hard because I've always worked my whole life and to be able to have this accident and to where it's just done me in, it's been pretty miserable. Um, I do have appointment coming up to get my hip uh, so it's not dislocated anymore. I'm pretty excited about that. Like I said, the, uh, the injection shots aren't working anymore and I can't have the injection shots while the specialists are working on my back and my hip because I wouldn't be able to feel the pain if it was doing any good or not. Uh, all I can do is sit here in this amazing home that I do have on wheels and and just be as comfortable as possible and that's what you guys need to look at when you are looking to do this lifestyle is you need to write down all the everything that you want out of a motor home or out of a out of a camper if you're going to do this lifestyle and just kind of just do it and if you can get something like this the four slide outs everything in this camper has been amazing and i i absolutely love it i i wouldn't have done I wouldn't have changed my anything about getting into this home. And 
once we start getting the disability, we'll start seeing more and more things. But it's like I'm still struggling with winter. And I don't know. I, I don't know yet if I'm going to make it through and survive through this winter or not. So we'll find out. Um, I, I want to say thank you to all the subscribers out there. Uh, the new subscribers that are coming to the channel. Uh, I At 1,000 subscribers, I will be giving a, a drone away. It'll be probably the Mavic Mini 2 series drone once we hit the 1,000 subscribers. And then I'll be able to start giving back to you guys as well, too. Uh, we got merch and things like that. And it'll be my way of being able to give back to you. But we need the subscribers to be able to do that. And that that's kind of a big deal, too. And then plus that would give me an income as well. And YouTube is hard. I mean, it is, you know... I wish I would have started YouTube a long time ago and that to, but it, it's super difficult coming up with the videos, the content and things like that. It's hard. And I know you guys like this winter living stuff and I'm excited to be able to share this winter with you and we'll just see how this winter goes. If I, if I'm going to make it or not see what happens uh maybe if i i don't have a you know anything scripted like the tyson fight was uh that was a disappointment <laughs> sorry you guys had to go through that but those girls fought harder than uh john paul and mike tyson did oh geez oh <clears throat> you tell me what you guys think of the uh the Mike Tyson fight, what you thought if you were just as disappointed as I am. Oh, because I'm still disappointed about it, all the memes and things. And then if you guys understand the song that they played with the Phil Collins song. So, um, what is it? I've waited my whole life for this moment. So this song, uh, when Phil Collins was a little boy, uh, he, they were in, a, in an accident and... Uh, there was a man that was a coward and all he had to do was reach out, reach his, reach his hand out and save the person and the person died. And Phil Collins went to go get help from authorities. And by the time they got back, the guy died and the cops were like, dude, you're such a coward. You had to, all you had to do is reach your hand out and, and help save him. And so 30 years later, Phil Collins becomes this, you know, amazing rock star, you know, through Genesis and everything like that. But when he he knew that Phil Collins knew that this guy, you know, was going to be at the concert and he was in front row seating and he sings this song that they were playing, you know, in, you know, it, it coming in and and john paul was singing it you know and everything thinking it's a cool song and what this song was about was he knew that he was a coward now the coward that was in there uh realized that phil collins was singing about him and he he started crying and he got up and he left the concert that's what that song was about so i think people really need to know their music before they they make it a theme song because that was that just made it seem, to me, really bad. Yes, it's a good song, but understanding the song and the meaning of what that song was about it was uh, about somebody letting somebody die right in front of Phil Collins. And, and Phil Collins was like four years old when this, this happened. But Phil Collins was a four-year-old little boy and went and got authorities to try and help. And all that guy had to do was reach out and, and, and save them. So, <clears throat> so yeah, know, know your music. I learned this not too long ago. Uh, I was jamming it on the, on the radio when I was coming home and my camp, uh, Kevin from our camp host turned around and said, do you know what that song's about? No. And he told me, I was like, holy crap. I was blown away. Oh, by it. Oh, but yeah, we will. Continue on going through this winter. I'm really excited to do this uh, Thanksgiving cook for you guys. And we'll, we'll have a few people that will be here. And that will be awesome. So, but until next time, as always, 
Stay safe, stay cool, and hope to see you on the road.